Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm gonna play this video and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. This video does not follow a typical critical briefing type of format. There is no spokesperson explaining things that are going on. They do provide some enhancements in the video like zooming in and drawing circles around stuff uh, but they don't they don't have a spokesperson telling you what's going on so uh, looking at a news article from WBAL TV from June 30th Baltimore a man is dead after a shootout with Baltimore police officers just blocks away from Patterson Park near the intersection of North Milton and East Fairmount Fairmount Avenues According to police, the man began firing at officers after they recognized him because of an outstanding warrant. A resident who did not wish to be identified described the moment she heard gunfights, gunfights, gunshots during the police shooting. I'll skip what she describes. Um, police said just before 5.30 p.m. on Thursday, officers recognized a 40-year-old man that was wanted on a warrant. As police began to follow him, they said he got inside of his car and started driving away until his car became disabled at the intersection. That's when police said the man started firing at two other officers riding by and got out of the car. As the suspect continued down Milton Street and continued to fire at our officers, other additional officers and came from the opposite direction, engaged the suspect, fired multiple rounds, and the suspect was shot at. He has been pronounced at the scene, Rich Worley, acting Baltimore Police Commissioner, said. Another resident gives a description of what's going on. Police did not say what the man was wanted for. The Maryland Attorney General's Office is investigating the shooting. Police said the man had a loaded handgun and an assault rifle with loaded magazines. All right. Here we go. Thank you. 
100. 100. 100 North Milton. It's right up here. Is that Roman? Yeah, that's Roman, dude. Where is he? So, we going to stick one more. I'm going to move it back at one more. No, 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 He's got a rifle. He's got a rifle. He's got a rifle. He's got a rifle. There's a rifle. He got a rifle. Gonna be this light. Hold the light, hold the light, hold the light. Stop, stop, stop. Where, Where is he? Right there. Let's go. 
get back into this so they said that they were chasing this dude um, because he had warrants um, it sounded like they caught wind of him you know they saw him started following him and then I don't know if they were making an approach he saw them and he jumped in the car and took off or he noticed them in the area and then jumped in the car and took off um, the one of the vehicles has officers um, in uniform, but the vehicle they're in is not a typical looking police car. It doesn't have a cage in the back. It appears to have a, a regular center console. It has a a remote head siren that's on like a little remote kind of thing, like a TV remote looking thing. Um, and their emergency lights are a small... Uh, they're not even a full-size interior um, light bar. It is a small light package that would go where an interior bar would go. So it looks like the vehicle is set up for very low-profile visibility. And I would suspect that um, those officers are either assigned to a special detail where they drive around in this vehicle to be able to get into areas and catch people in the act as it's happening because they're not in a fully marked, obvious-looking police car. But as soon as they get out of the vehicle, boom, they're in full police attire. It's obviously who they are. Um, or they could be a, a special team within the police department that focuses on uh, warrants or something like that. So some agencies have warrant teams that's all they do they just go out and serve these warrants on more high risk kind of people not really sure what's going on but it looks like a mix of um potentially regular patrol people and maybe some of these people assigned to either a special kind of assignment or they're on a special team the guy who is wanted again they don't say what his warrants are for him being 40 years old, wanted on warrants and um, running from police like this and getting into a shootout with them, I am willing to bet that this is not the first time he's been involved with the system. I'm willing to bet this guy has had multiple run-ins with the police and probably has an extensive criminal background. Would not be surprised if the warrant is for something like a probation violation, uh, violating conditions of his bond, bail jumping, um, so, or, you know, anything. Um, unfortunately, that is kind of a common thing. It shouldn't be, but it is kind of a common thing. They said that he his vehicle became disabled in an intersection. They didn't really specify how, so I don't know if he hit a curb. Um, it doesn't look like the front of his vehicle has hit another vehicle or, or anything. It looks like he may have gone through something potentially. It looks like there is something sticking through the grill of his vehicle. It almost looks like a piece of wood sticking out. Uh, but the rest of the vehicle doesn't appear to be damaged. You don't see like a big gap in the... Um, the hood right here, the front bumper doesn't look crumpled or anything. It's just this tire is obviously broken. Uh, so whatever he hit, <laughs> he has screwed this car up majorly. But he is still going. They also do not um, explain very well um, which officers are in which kind of vehicle. Um, we see that Ford Explorer go past and this thing right here, I, I don't know exactly what this is. I don't think 
it's a Ford Explorer. I'm not sure what this thing is, or if it's even related to what's going on. It could just be a random person, and as soon as the gunfight starts out, they're backing up. But later on, we do see someone in a Ford Explorer, um, and I think they're the ones who have the laptop in their car. Maybe it was this one? Potentially. I don't know. It's not in, in great order here at this one, so maybe this Nicholas the Jesus guy. Yeah, so here's the Ford Explorer. I'd say that he was probably um, in that unmarked that we saw. Maybe not, because... I don't know. This is one, like, I like how these agencies will put stuff out, but without them kind of showing up in aerial or, you know, who's who, who's what, it's really hard to, to, to figure out what the fuck's going on sometimes. So he's running along. Let's see if I can get that car. Alright, so he's running along. He's got his pistol in his hand with the uh, 50 round drum on it. And he has a bag that has a weapon that fires a rifle cartridge. In the news article, they say it was an assault rifle. Um, I don't think it's an actual rifle. I don't think it's a full-size rifle. I don't believe that it's probably an SBR. I suspect that it's probably an AK pistol based off what I could see in the video. So, what is a rifle, what is an SBR, and what is an AK pistol or AR pistol? So, a rifle, according to the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, they say a rifle is a weapon that has a barrel longer than 16 inches and has a stock on it. Stock is what you put into your shoulder. A short barreled rifle is a rifle with a barrel that is under 16 inches and has a stock on it. So the only difference between a rifle and a short barreled rifle is the 16 inch barrel. If it's 16 or above, it is a rifle. If it's below 16, it is a SBR, short barreled rifle. A pistol, an AK pistol or an AR pistol, has no stock just has the pistol grip on there no stock nothing that you shoulder into your uh, your shoulder there and a barrel under 16 inches the rest of the the weapon is is the same as a rifle it's just it has no stock on it and you can't have a, a forward assist grip on there So what I think he has is an AK pistol in his bag. I don't think he has a rifle in there because the bag appears to be too small to contain an actual rifle. Something that has a 16 inch barrel plus the length of the stock and everything making its overall length, you know, 20 something inches long. Um, I don't think it's an actual SBR. I think it's an AK pistol based off the curvature of the magazine when he gets it out and what the receiver looks like
the pistol he has appears to be a Glock variant and has a 50 round drum magazine affixed to it. The drum magazine for the pistol and it being a Glock style pistol and the AK pistol those are very popular weapon choices for people of the streets if they can if they can get their hands on them those are what they want those are probably the more sought after weapons if they can get their hands on them they I would suspect they probably pay more for those than they would other types of guns they come across reason being is because all their their rap idols use them in their rap videos the AK pistol they refer to as a chopper or chopper or a Draco. If you go to YouTube, type in rap video, you are most likely going to see people handling an AK pistol or AR pistol and a Glock with a laser beam on it and either a, a, an extended magazine or a drum magazine in it. The drum magazine for a pistol, I don't necessarily see the use for a drum magazine. I think that's more of a trinket kind of thing. Uh, you, I don't think that you can effectively carry a pistol with a drum magazine attached to it and be able to conceal it and whatnot um, it's it's going to obviously print <laughs> a whole lot um, and it's going to be super heavy you're going that's, I mean it's like 50 rounds it's gonna be a super heavy gun to be uh, in a holster weighing down your waistband I've seen photographs I've seen like store surveillance video of of dudes holding these things in their waistline um, and trying to walk around with them you know hanging out their pocket um, you see them constantly holding on to their pants trying to keep their pants up just the weight of this thing uh, weighs their pants down and plus it doesn't help that a lot of them don't wear uh, correct fitting pants anyway they they all have sagging pants they're not, not even wearing them correctly so even without the added weight of that gun in its magazine, they're already struggling to keep their pants up. And then when they put that gun in there, um, it's it's even more of a struggle. So I just don't see the worth of putting a 50 round drum mag in a handgun and then trying to walk around with it. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you're I guess wanting to initiate contact with the pistol, perhaps utilizing a drum magazine could be a benefit. But if you if, if you're going to a place to initiate contact, why even bring a pistol? Bring a rifle. So I just don't think that. Um, they're they're really useful. I could see a drum magazine potentially being useful for a full auto pistol, just to be able to maintain a rate of fire a little bit longer than you would with a regular regular magazine that's going to go empty super quick. But other than that, I just don't think they're worth it. I think that um, the higher capacity extended magazines are better. Uh, for example, the Glock, uh, I think it's a 33 round, 33 round magazine. I think that one's good. The P Mag uh, 21, and I believe it's 27 round magazine. I think those are good. Um, the drum magazine, I think it's just way too large, way too bulky to be of any use. As he is running. He has to keep a hold of this handgun. 
Because he obviously doesn't have a holster to stick it into. At least it doesn't appear as though he has a holster to stick it into. And even if he did have a holster to stick it into, this damn thing's going to be so freaking heavy that um, it's going to cause him some issues. But if he had a holster to stick that gun into, he could have stuck it into his holster and then started getting his long gun out. It's good that he did not, because I think that had he got that quote-unquote rifle out a lot sooner, things would have been a lot different. So we're, we're lucky that street thugs are stupid, and they don't understand tactics and skills and gear. The bag that is carrying the gun, the, the rifle, I seriously doubt it is a specialty bag that is made to carry one. It's probably just a regular backpack that he has this rifle stuffed into. However, this is a popular way of carrying an SBR in urban areas. Having a regular looking backpack and you have an SBR inside of it. No one is none the wiser. It looks like a regular bag. It doesn't look like a rifle case or anything like that. And you can move through urban environments with a rifle and not alert anyone to it. So 511, I know, uh, makes specialty bags for this. Uh, inside the bag, the main compartment, you know, there's straps or whatever to kind of hold that rifle in its uh, same orientation so that when you open the bag, the rifle's going to be in that same spot all the time. Other companies will, will make these kind of things as well. Um, you can use other regular commercial off-the-shelf backpacks uh, to get the same thing. If you're going to have a backpack, um, commercial off-the-shelf backpack, or even a tactical backpack, um, one thing I think that you should do is take brightly colored paracord to make zipper pulls on that bag for that main compartment where that gun's going to be at. So yellow paracord, the neon green or toxic green paracord, orange, red, white, royal blue, anything that is going to be bright and contrast a lot against the the normal color of that bag so for example if you have a black bag you do not want to have black paracord as the zipper pulls it's going to blend in too much it would be better if you had something like white paracord or yellow paracord or neon green paracord that is going to stand out a lot against that black fabric of that bag when you Keep the zippers in the same place, which is another recommended thing. Keep your zippers in a closed position in the same spot. That way, when you go to that bag, you know where to go to those zippers. And when you go to that spot, those bright-ass colored paracord pulls are right there, easily noticeable, and easy to grab a hold of. You can rip that bag open via the zipper and then get that rifle out and put it into play. As I said, we're lucky that uh, the street thugs don't understand these things. Uh, if they if they did, they would be a whole lot more difficult to deal with. Uh, but this is something that you can be thinking about uh, if you are wanting to move through an urban environment uh, with a bag that has a rifle in it or SBR or AR pistol in it. I'm not sure what happens here. I think he just basically falls from walking backwards. I don't know if he's hit or not. He doesn't appear to act in a way that shows that he's been hit. He's not fencing. He's not like clutching or anything. So I think that he just, just simply falls. And so this is... One of the problems to walking backwards, you increase your risk of falling down. 
Now you can see that he is obviously not even aiming the pistol correctly. He is just sending rounds towards the general area. If he had been aiming his gun, things could have been a little bit worse. But luckily, like I said, these dudes are pretty stupid. And they often do not accurately aim their guns. They just point and start shooting. Which is one of the reasons why they like those drum magazines and those higher capacity magazines. So he's standing out in the open as he's getting this thing out. As we'll see in, in another part of the video, um, if you can even remember, um, as he's getting this thing out, two officers come up over and start shooting at him. I don't think that they hit him, at least not in the critical spots, but it's, it is surprising to me that he was out in the middle of the open getting this rifle out, being fired upon, and did not get dropped right there. As you can see, uh, the the long curvature of this magazine, this appears to be an AK style magazine and just the, the shape of this receiver right here just looks to be like an AK. So he experienced some kind of problem with his pistol. I don't know if he ran completely out of ammunition or if the drum magazine had a malfunction. Drum magazines are sometimes not known to be super reliable. Sometimes they are known to cause malfunctions. And that is a good possibility of what has happened. Um, this is also why your regular stick magazines are more preferred. They are more reliable than a drum magazine in general. Instead of dropping the magazine and going to another he decides to do a new york reload he drops one gun on the ground and pulls out another now this one right here like i said even though this is legally i think this is ak pistol and although it's legally defined as a pistol it does not fire pistol caliber cartridges it fires rifle cartridges and rifle cartridges will go through standard police armor like a warm knife through warm butter It'll go through both panels, no problem whatsoever. A lot of these street thugs don't realize the significance of the ballistics when it comes to those weapons. Trying to explain terminal ballistics to them, uh, or ballistics in general, will just make their head explode. Uh, they, they don't understand that stuff. They don't really care about that stuff. Uh, they A lot of them choose these things based off their looks and because who they idolize is using it so if their favorite rappers are using ak pistols they're going to be using them i guarantee you <laughs> i guarantee you if you could get a good number of your popular rappers out there to start rocking a 357 Colt Python revolver in their videos, it would be no time at all that you would start seeing these stupid little thugs on the street rocking 357 uh, Colt Python revolvers. If they see their, their favorite rap idols using it, they're going to be getting it too. Now, some of them do understand that the rifle cartridge is superior to a pistol cartridge. They know. They Some of them do. They really do understand that that rifle is going to mess some stuff up and it's going to go through armor a lot easier. Some of them, they understand with the ARs that the green tip stuff is better. They know that much. A lot of them uh, only know that because of video games and stuff like that. They couldn't really tell you uh, what's inside of it. They couldn't really spit out any statistical information as far as ballistics or anything like that. They just know in general that the green tip stuff is better than the other stuff and it's quote unquote armor piercing. <clears throat> he does this New York reload out in the middle of the sidewalk. If he had went to between these vehicles to take cover 
that could have prolonged the gunfight. He could have got himself into a position where it would have been harder for them to engage him. And that could have changed the outcome of this event had he got the behind cover, got that rifle put in the play, and then start using it. So they're lucky that he kind of stood out in the open in the sidewalk trying to get this thing out and ready and then started taking rounds as he started to move. I think it's possible that he may have been hit as he's walking away. a funny move. So I think he had been hit right there. So he brought that car to a stop in the intersection, and this is where they start. He starts taking contact. So let me back it up just a little bit more. Where is he? Right there. Right. So he's come to a stop through the car and park and is starting to dismount when start taking rounds. So that's a crappy place to be at when you start taking rounds is in a parked vehicle that is not in gear. Vehicles are the last place you want to be at in a gunfight. They are like bullet magnets and they do not stop bullets very well. So your priority at that point is to dismount that vehicle as quickly as possible. Do not try to in Generally, you should not be trying to engage in a gunfight while seated in the vehicle. Now, there may be some scenarios where you have to start shooting from inside that vehicle. But it should be last resort. If you can, dismount that vehicle. Get the hell out of it. Because sitting in a car that does not stop bullets is basically like sitting in a bush and shooting from within that bush the bullets are going to come right to you the bush ain't stopping it just like the car is not stopping it so he was in kind of a crappy spot coming to a stop and then taking contact On your hand. So in this camera view, we see the guy go down. Now, we can't see with the same clarity that these officers can see with their human eyes. That is a limitation of the body camera. So what it appears to us is the guy's down and they're still shooting. They could see or potentially see his arms moving and it being the appearance that he's still trying to grab his gun and fight with it. And that could be why they're continuing to shoot. Shots fired, shots fired. Even if that's not why they're shooting, I really have no problem with them shooting him a few more times while he's down. I really have no problem with that at all. He tried to kill police officers. He's brought this upon himself. Shots fired, shots fired, 100. Move in on him, move in. Move in, move in. So you can hear someone's tire 
uh, hissing. So whoever's car this is, sucks for them that he tried to take cover behind it and then got it all shot up. It's a rifle, he's got a rifle. He's got a rifle. Run on him. And so by looking at this, it does not appear as though the slide is all the way to the rear in a locked open position. So it doesn't fully seem like to me the the gun has fired the slide lock. Now it could be empty and by dropping the gun to the ground like that, it could have caused the slide to rock forward. Um, but without them providing any details about it or taking any more photographs of it and showing those photographs, it's really hard to say. It's right up here. Is that Roman? Yeah, that's Roman, dude. Hey, no, it's not. So we see the regular uh, marked patrol car right here. This vehicle, it's hard to tell for sure what it is. I can't tell based off the rear um, taillights of this car. It could be like maybe a Fusion or something like that. I'm not really positive on that, but it's obviously not a typical police vehicle. So you can see the interior of it. There was no cage. It looked like it had a regular console, etc. Uh, so this vehicle, I think, is a a special vehicle, um, unmarked vehicle that's is made for special assignments for them to kind of move into areas uh, a little bit more stealthily, uh, not be as noticeable, but still be able to initiate emergency lights, conduct traffic stops, uh, be parked in the middle of the roadway with flashlights lights on. When he got out, you could see a, a blue light shining on the side there. And of course, has a siren. Like right there. Like this dude's right there grabbing the rifle out. This officer's right here shooting at him. And the guy does not go down. He's got a rifle! Got a rifle! He's got a rifle! Got a rifle! So since this officer came out of the back seat of his car, if this officer had been rocking a rifle, then for sure I think he would have been able to make very accurate hits on target. As that guy was in the middle of the sidewalk right there, getting his rock. <laughs> or even a shotgun. Either one. If he had a shotgun or rifle, this dude would have been dropped right there. So pistols, pistols suck. Um, they're not very accurate because they have a very short barrel and their terminal ballistics suck. Long guns are what you want for gunfights. So that car that had four officers in it, it would have been nice if one of them would have had a rifle. Had one of them had a rifle, I think that this would have ended a lot differently. I think that this gunfight would not have lasted as long. Drop it! Drop it! Drop it! Get swapped for that location. You can put it 
So that constant beeping noise that you hear, uh, that's him trying to get on the air, but he can't get out because other people are talking. So again, what I talked about uh, being in a vehicle during a gunfight is a crappy place to be at. Um, aside from that, I don't think that his handgun handling skills are the greatest. And because of that, um, I think as he had fired one-handed, basically, I'll drop this to a slower speed. So the first firing um, that he does, he's shooting one-handed and almost looks like pretty wild to me. I don't even know if he was fully aiming that thing. Um, it looked like he may have had a malfunction because he racks the slide for some reason. But it, it didn't look like the slide had uh, locked into a half-open position or a, you know, that would be indicative of a, a stovepipe or anything like that. So I'm not sure why he ends up racking that slide on the gun. So not a big fan of that first uh, shooting. Uh, transition in the gun. <laughs> transition in the gun into his non-dominant hand just to open the car door with his dominant hand when he could have easily done it with his non-dominant uh, that's just poor handling right there in my opinion He goes to rack his slide again.
but it does not do it in a way that I would recommend. If you're going to be racking that slide, you need to grip it and rip it. Grip the top of that slide, rip it backwards, and let go. You do not want to hold your hand on the slide, pull the slide back, and then ride it forward. That can induce a malfunction. No one's gonna be this light. It's gonna be this light. Matthew, I don't know how to pronounce that. Banoiki, Banicky. I have no idea. I think he performs the best out of all of them. No one's gonna be this light. Where is he? Right there. I liked his actions on on the objective there. Where is he? Right there. So he very quickly dismounts the vehicle, and let's go into slow speed here. Get rid of that annoying sound. Gets the sight picture, boom. Then he runs forward. The shooting on the move, I think, is probably a contributing factor for why these two officers missed or potentially missed at such a, a closer range. I do think that at this point, he, this guy may have gotten hit by him. As I noted in that uh, security cam footage, it looked like he was starting to move kind of weird. For some reason, he racks the slide on his gun. I don't know why. It doesn't appear as though the slide's backwards or anything like that he fires some rounds and then he racks that slide So he fired his gun to empty, but his slide did not lock back when it went empty. Back that up. So he fires. That's his last round. He goes to pull the trigger after that last round. I think nothing happens. So he does... Uh, an immediate action to that. He does a tap rack. He taps it, he racks it. He did not initially recognize the fact that his slide was locked. 
but he does eventually recognize that. Goes to perform a reload and drop slide. So I like how quick he was to perform that tap rack on there. Um, the first rack that he did, I'm not really sure why he did that. Um, that could be um, out of a habit, possibly, from doing a lot of force-on-force, force, because your force-on-force force guns, they can um, jam up quite a bit, and I have found myself doing this in force-on-force force classes, uh, getting to a shootout, and as soon as I'm you know, moving to cover or something, I'm racking that slide to make sure that when I bring that sim gun up, it's going to be shooting again. So that this could potentially be, um, I guess you could almost call that a training scar. And that could be why we were seeing him rack that slide like that without it needing to obviously be racked. But when he fired that last round, like I said, the slide did not lock to the rear. But he got a he got a dead trigger when he went to go fire, and he did an immediate action drill to that. Great timing on it too. Um, there are some people out there who are talking about um, when it comes to tap rack, avoiding the tap altogether and just racking because uh, it is quicker to do so. Um, I I I can see the arguments for that. Um, but I myself, I'm an advocator of tapping and racking. So anytime you go to your shooting and the gun does not go boom, you perform a malfunction uh, clearance. You tap and you rack. Unless you can see, obviously, that the slide is locked to the rear, then you know you fired the slide lock. But if you go to pull that trigger and nothing happens, slides forward, tap, rack. All right, really not much else to say about this video. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.